Fellas, welcome to a new video, or not a new video, if you're watching this in the future. Today we're talking about grass in video games. Grass is pretty important. When it's present in a scene, you might not notice it. But when it's not present, the environment just doesn't feel right. The catch here, though, is that when there's not enough grass, it feels just as weird, and the grass stands out. The solution to this, of course, though, is to just put more grass in. As we've discussed in previous videos, though, having a lot of one thing can be quite expensive and heavily affect the performance of our video game. So how do games render so much grass while still having more than one frame per second? There's plenty of techniques for grass rendering, several of which we can just throw into the trash as they are unacceptably bad. One of these techniques in particular, though, has been tried and true for decades which I use to turn this vacant plane into a dense field of grass. You may not believe me right now, but this is 1.2 million animated grass meshes rendered at 500 frames per second. And now, you may be asking yourself, what's the technique, Ace Rolla? Well, stay tuned to find out. To set the scene, I have here in Unity a silly little 300 by 300 meter plane that has its vertices displaced by a height map. This is the plane that we'll be placing our grass on. I also have a little cube that functions as a player model reference. Usually, when you're getting started on a project, it's hard to find a good starting point. But with this, it's pretty obvious. In order to render grass, you need grass to render. The different grass rendering techniques I mentioned earlier are what determines what our grass model will look like. Let's start with an example. Take a look at this screenshot from Final Fantasy XIV, specifically the grass here. Now, if you look closely, if you really, really analyze it, you may notice that it's not a 3D model at all, and is actually just an image. That's right, this grass is in fact two triangles that form a quad that samples a grass texture. This general technique is called billboarding, and billboard grass is the technique I'll be going over. Billboard grass is commonly composed of multiple intersecting quads. For my project, I decided to use three. Now, with this technique, the texture does all the work, so you need a good grass image texture. I decided to paint my own, but I've never made a texture before like this, so please don't laugh at me. It looks like this, and when we apply it to our billboard grass model, the grass really comes together. With our grass model complete, we need to actually place it all over the plane. So to simplify this, let's flatten our plane first. It's going to take a lot of grass to cover this entire plane. Much more grass than the CPU can actually handle. So we're going to use a very handy dandy method called... Normally, in a given scene, the CPU takes all the object mesh data that exists and shoves it into this big ol' funnel that gets processed by the GPU. This mesh data gets copied from the CPU to the GPU every single frame. This is the biggest bottleneck of all graphics programming, because communicating data is really costly. We want to render hundreds of thousands of grass objects, so obviously, pushing millions of vertices into that GPU funnel is going to clog it up. What if we could conveniently keep that data on the GPU so we don't need to copy it over every single frame? We could create this massive buffer of grass positions and then ask the GPU to use that buffer to find the proper grass position each frame, rather than having the CPU copy each individual grass's position over. This technique is called GPU instancing, and it's perfect for stuff like grass as it doesn't need to exist on the CPU side, which is the biggest downside of GPU instancing. Anything instantiated by the GPU itself doesn't technically exist, as far as the CPU is aware. 
Before we do any GPU instancing though, we need to calculate some grass positions. We are going to calculate the positions with a compute shader so that the positions of the grass will go directly into the GPU buffer and the CPU doesn't need to do any copying at all. The positions we are creating will fill a square space of whatever size we'd like. For example, 300 for our 300 by 300 meter plane. We take the thread ID of our compute shader thread, which will be in the range 0 to 300 for both axes. Then we subtract 150 so it centers it over the origin, and that's about it. With these positions generated, we can tell the GPU to instantiate our grass. Our billboard grass we made earlier is composed of three meshes, so this will result in three separate instancing calls. Taking a look back at our plane, there's now one grass object every meter, which is great. Unfortunately, it doesn't look quite dense enough, so let's double the amount of grass objects. This is attainable by multiplying that position we calculated earlier by 1 over whatever density we want. Currently that's 2, so we multiply the position by 1 half. This grass density looks nice to me, so I won't make my GPU suffer any more than it already is. To put this all into perspective, we are rendering two grass objects per meter. Each grass object is three quads, which is 12 vertices and six triangles per grass object, and there's 300 meters squared. This means that we are drawing, um... 2,160,000 triangles every frame, just for the grass, and currently, we have an average frame rate of 500 FPS. This would not be possible at all without the GPU instancing. Alright, cool, we have grass. It all looks the same though, and that's boring. Also unrealistic, but that matters to me less. This is the part of the video where I remind everyone that I am a technical artist. The first thing I did was add some variance to the positions of the grass. It's hard to see, but it removes the uniformity of the positions. Next, I added variance to the height of the grass with simplex noise so that height variance is clumped together, meaning that higher grass will be grouped with higher grass and so on, like in real life. That's about all for variants of the grass model. There's not much else to do, and I think it already improves the visuals a good deal. Now comes the hard part, and that's animation. Grass is long and thin, thus it is susceptible to wind, and it flows back and forth with it. Obviously, we aren't going to simulate wind, we're just going to fake it. Animation in this context is going to happen in the vertex shader. This is the stage of the rendering pipeline that finalizes vertex positions, so I can have the GPU modify vertice positions of a model however I please. We have a bit of a problem though, and that's that this grass model only has four vertices to work with. That's not a lot. Even worse, we don't even have four to work with, since the bottom two remain stationary and only the top two are gonna move. The basic idea here is that we're going to skew the grass back and forth to make it look like it's being blown around. Luckily, math provides us with oscillators in the form of trig functions, so by using a mess of trig values and random numbers, we end up with an animation that looks like so. How cool and calming! I'm quite proud of it. Wait, what's that? You actually want to know how the animation works? Okay. To begin, we hash the instance ID of the grass object to get a random number unique to an individual object. Then, if that hash value is above a certain threshold, we compute a cosine value with a slightly faster frequency. Otherwise, we compute a default cosine value with a parameterized frequency. This frequency is reduced on grass that is taller, since taller grass would realistically take longer to swing back and forth. Next, we square the cosine wave, reduce its amplitude, then subtract from it based on the ID hash to add local variance to the cosine value, and then we reduce the amplitude even further. Amplitude, in this context, refers to the distance that the grass object will sway from its original position. Finally, we add this value to the local position of our topside vertices, 
range, scaled by the hash ID for further localized variance, and also the height variance of the grass, since taller grass will sway further than the shorter grass. This animation obviously isn't perfect, but it is much cheaper computationally than a full-on physics simulation of wind. Also, that simulation isn't even realistically possible, since none of this grass data exists on the CPU. If you recall from the beginning, this plane that we're rendering the grass on top of has its vertices displaced. The grass doesn't move with it yet, which is a problem. This involves converting the world space coordinates of our grass to UV coordinates, such that they can sample the same height map as the terrain mesh. And now, our grass properly displaces along with the terrain. Our grass looks more natural now, and is largely complete as an asset. But, I had one last idea. The color of our grass is uncomfortably homogenous. It's boring to look at. I thought about this for a good while, and I came up with several different ideas, most of which I streamed live on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash acerola underscore t, link in the description, streams on Monday at 5pm PST. The dilemma, though, is that I wanted to visualize both old and young grass. The older grass is more yellow, while the younger grass is more green, or in our case, it's closer to the default color of our texture. How do we know, though, if grass is old or not? Taller grass is older than younger grass, so we can use our height modifier we were using to cause height variance to also calculate a new value that will control how yellow the grass turns. With this value, we also use the vertical UV coordinates to interpolate the strength of this value as the grass pixels increase in height, which will cause only the tips of the grass to become very yellow. With this effect applied, I think it all comes together in terms of visuals, so please let me know what you think about it. Alright, the performance of our grass is already pretty good, and in the real world, you would never instantiate this much grass across such a large area anyways, so the grass would be even faster in that real world scenario. This is nerd shit, so if you don't care, please skip ahead to the conclusion. Uh oh, disclaimer. I'm about to talk about something I've explained in depth in my previous video, dynamic detail in video games. Please go watch it now before continuing. Wait, what's that? You don't want to watch it? Okay, well, here's a quick recap. The easiest optimizations to be made involve level of detail. We can cull grass in the vertex shader in the same way we cull triangles in the geometry shader in that level of detail video, by checking if a grass vertex is outside the view of the camera, or is a certain distance from the camera. This improves our performance a great deal when we are looking away from all the grass, as well as allowing custom distance-based level of detail culling, as demonstrated here. Another optimization involves reducing the amount of tessellation that is happening on our terrain. In fact, it doesn't need to be tessellated at all, since the grass completely obscures it. This increases our FPS a great deal. The last optimization that I can confidently talk about is reducing the amount of instructions in our vertex and fragment shaders. When we are instantiating this many meshes, even just one instruction can scale considerably in cost. Using numbers from earlier, we are rendering 2,160,000 triangles, which is 4,320,000 vertices, meaning our vertex shader executes that many times per frame. Our fragment shader executes even more than that. By reducing the complexity of our vertex shader animation, we can improve the performance of the grass little by little. Overall, billboard grass is an incredibly performant and fast option for rendering foliage. There's a reason it shows up literally everywhere, and I promise that if you look for it, you'll see it in nearly every game that you play. But it has one major problem, and that's if you look down on the grass from above, it looks like shit. This isn't actually a problem if your game has a fixed camera angle like Age of Empires 4, that's a recent example that uses this technique, I'm pretty sure. But anyways, this is a problem that modern foliage rendering techniques seek to solve with more geometry at the expense of performance. 
In my next video, I'll be trying my hand at 3D modeling some foliage to improve the overall appearance of this grass and remove this issue that my billboard grass has. The appearance of the grass could also be significantly improved with simple post-processing effects, so please look forward to videos on that as well. If you'd like to check out the code for this project, there's a link in the description. And if you liked this video, I'd appreciate if you subscribed and left a comment. It means a lot. But I've got to go now. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.